All right, my apologies, guys, for that uh, not working out the way I wanted to. This is just a quick screencast. I'll make this full screen for you a little bit later on. Um, what I was going to talk about was uh, some introductory circle geometry. Um, tomorrow during our class, we'll do the applications of this. I just wanted to make sure you were clear of some terminology and go through a few theorems for you. Okay, we're going to go through, and um, these are all things you should know. Um, but just to refresh your memory. So a radius is a line from the outside of a circle or the circumference to the centre. Diameter is a line through the centre from one side to the other. So obviously a diameter is twice a radius. A semicircle is just half a circle. A chord is not a diameter. Um, it joins two sides of the circle not through the centre. So that's a chord. A sequence is the same as a chord except it keeps going, so it's actually a line, it doesn't just stop at those two points A and B. A minor arc is one that is less than half of the circle um, around the outside of the circumference from A to B. And a major arc is obviously the bigger one. So we have a minor arc, the smaller distance between A and B, and a major arc, the bigger distance between A and B. Uh, then we can also break the circle into a minor sector and a major sector where you draw a chord across and you actually look at the area between the chord and the circumference. Um, obviously, once again, you have a big one and a small one. And that's it. All right. And then there's a property that um, equal arcs subtend equal angles at the center. So if we take two arcs of the same length, um, the angles that are actually produced at the centre are the same. So from that diagram you can see what that means. I'll play that one more time so you can watch it. So there's one arc and an angle at the centre and the same length arc produces the same angle at the centre. Um, and we can also draw angles on the circumference from the same segment. So if we take a segment AB and we draw um, the blue angles and then if we draw the brown angles, they're all, they're all angles on the, from the same segment AB on the circumference. Um, and we'll, prove, we'll see a little bit later that they're actually the same as well. That's one of the theorems we're going to cover. Okay, the first theorem is that equal angles at the center of a circle in this case O, stand on equal chords. So we can, oh, the converse of that's also true, so that if you have equal chords, they will produce equal angles at the center of a circle. What does this mean? Well, if we draw an angle from the center um, from the chord AB, uh, and we draw an angle from the center along to the chord CD, the angles at the center will be the same. So there's the chord AB, and that's the same as the chord CD. So when we have those eight equal angles at the centre, it produces equal chords on the circumference. All right, we're going to have go at proving this now. Um, you don't have to be able to reproduce these proofs. So I've done one here for you. The others are in the textbook, and I will produce a screencast later that shows you how to do each one separately. But the way in which we lay out proofs is really, really important. So we're going to prove that equal angles at the centre of a circle stand on equal chords. So I've constructed a diagram there, and we're given the piece of information that they are equal angles at the centre. And what we want to do is prove that AB equals CD. So the chord AB is the same as the chord CD. So if you have a look at triangle AOB and triangle DOC, what we really want to try and do here is prove that those two triangles are congruent. We're going to cover the properties of congruent triangles in two unit, but you should have seen them before. We can see straight away that AO equals OC because they're both radiuses of the circle. We can also see for similar reasons that OB or BO is the same as DO because they're also both radiuses of the circle. And you may remember Oh, and we've been given that angle AOB is the same as angle COD. And you may remember that there's a property for congruent triangles that if you have two sides and the enclosed angle, then uh, the same in two different triangles, then those two triangles are congruent. We say that's 
due to the property side angle side, which in our proofs we abbreviate as SAS. So because those two triangles are congruent, we can therefore say that AB is the same as CD, which is what we wanted to prove. And mathematicians have a uh, smart aleck way of saying as we wanted to show, and they abbreviate that as QED. I'll leave you to look up the Latin for that. We could also prove the converse theorem in that um, if you're given equal chords, they have equal angles. And the way we would do that is by using the property of congruent triangles of side, side, side. So if all three sides of a triangle are the same, the triangles must be identical and therefore congruent and therefore the angles, the corresponding angles are the same. So I'll leave you to do, have a go at doing that converse proof. Um, a corollary from that proof is that, and my wife's just commenting on my corollary word, um, a, a corollary is that the perpendicular from the centre of a circle bisects a chord. Um, and you can have, once again have a go at proving this by using isosceles triangles. So you'll have a couple of isosceles triangles in there and um, you might be able to prove it using that. And angles for that matter. Okay, the second theorem is that the angle that an arc of the circle subtends at the center is twice the angle it subtends at the conference. Well, what does this mean? If we draw an angle at the center that's created from a particular arc, and let's call that angle 2 theta. If we then draw from the same arc, so that's the angle at the center of the circle, if we draw from the same arc the angle at the circumference, that's 1 theta. Um, the proof for that is in the textbook and once again involves um, isosceles triangles and it's something that you should work your way through and as I said I've produced a couple of screencasts later on that show you how to do that. A corollary from that theorem is that the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. See whether you can see why. Think about what the angle at the centre is and then think about what the angle on the circumference is. The final theorem we're going to discuss tonight is that angles on the same segment are equal. This is what I mentioned earlier, and this is what it means. Suppose we have a segment from A to B, and we draw an angle to P from that segment. That will be the same as the angle we draw to Q from that segment. So that's angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are equal. And that's all we've got for tonight.